Well, I've been drifting, lifting my mind with these splits and you're realizing just what I'm missing. Study from the Dirty Heads. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty awesome. So you guys had a, uh, a new album come out. Uh, was it July? I believe so, yeah. I believe it was. <laughs> and uh, and what, what was it called? And uh, if you want to talk about uh, maybe your favorite song from that album. Oh, yeah, we just released our new album called Sound of Change. Um, one of my favorite songs off it, I think we may be Silence Deafening. Um, we worked with a new producer that we hadn't worked with before on it, um, Buddha Shampoo, and he was just super cool. We vibed really well. And it's just a little harder, a little like grimier song than we normally do. So performing it live especially is a lot of fun. We get to rock out a little harder. I get to use some distortion, actually, which I don't get to use much of, so it's fun. Yeah, cool. So uh, I, I saw another interview where I, I think you were talking about using different uh, effects pedals for your guitars. Um, what what were the, the, the new ones that you used, and, and what are your favorite ones now? Um, yeah, well, for that song um, especially, I, I got a, a pedal called the Dino Ranger. It's made by, um, divided by 13, and it's just cool. It just adds like a little bit of grit and just some balls to your guitar, and then also had to get the original Whammy pedal, which is awesome pedal, and it's like, you know, what um, Rage, you know, uh, Tom Morello used on all of his stuff wow. to get that high, like, when it goes yeah. really high, boo. So, yeah, I got one of those, and... Um, it, you know, it, it goes up two octaves or something. It makes your guitar two octaves higher. So that one's fun to play with. And um, just some cool pedals, phaser pedals, uh, tremolo pedals, wah pedals. Pedals are fun. Yeah. Toys. Absolutely. So uh, you mentioned Tom Morello. So who are, at, at least for, I'm sure you have a million musical influences, but as, as far as your guitar playing, who uh, who influenced you? Um, I think when I, first time I heard uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and um, his like rendition of Little Wing, that he does is just so insane. So I think I remember hearing that song and being like, "Wow, I wanna, I wanna play guitar like that," you know. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So um, I guess to kind of jump off of that topic, because we could probably nerd out on guitar stuff for all night. Um, <laughs> uh, have you have you ever played the Norva before? Yeah, we played her. God, this might be our fifth time or so. Really? Yeah, we played her quite a few times. Yeah. So I, I remember. I think between 2010 and 11, I, I think I saw you guys play like six times. Oh, wow. Because I, it was, it was always like I, I was going to see one band, and then you guys always opened. It was like every band I saw that for those two years, you guys um, did that for. So was that like a really intense time of touring? Or are you guys still touring that hard? Yeah, that's kind of how we do it. We we're always on the road, and um, you know we weren't all, we didn't always have songs on the radio and stuff like that. So we just we made fans by constantly being on the road, and we go out, we meet our fans, we do meet and greets, we do whatever we can, you know, and to stay relevant and we love touring we have fun playing and we just feel like the live show is a very important part of a band you know like when i like a band and i see them live and their live show's good i like them even more you know so we're always on the road yeah so um did you i'm, I'm sure that you had a time that you were touring in like a van and a u-haul trailer um do you have any like terrible stories from that from those dark times i mean jeez pick a night i mean there it's fun looking back at it, but it's tough, you know, when you're a young band and a lot of bands, you know, are still doing it. It's, uh, you know, you're making just enough to put gas in the van and make it to the next spot and everyone's eating, you know, 99 cent menu for fast food and, right. <laughs> you know, it, no one's showering. You got a van full of dudes that haven't showered for a week and, you know, it's grind. Like the whole thing is just a grind, but um, it makes it, you know, getting a bus, like, you feel like you deserve it, it yeah. and it, it makes it all that much better. So, I, I can only just the whole experience is a, it, you're li you're living in a van with ten dudes driving around the country, you know, with making losing money. So, yeah, sure. so <laughs> yeah. how, how long did that last? Did we did that for probably seven or eight years. Um, yeah, we've been touring now. We probably have been in a bus for maybe three or four years now. So we've been touring for a long time. Cool. So. Um, I, I guess my next question is, um, do you think it's more important to, as, as a band, work together as, as a team, as like a really solid band, or do you think it's more important to be good at your instruments? Does that make sense? Oh, totally. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to be a team, and everyone's got to work together. I mean, I know many people, like I have great friends of mine who are much better at guitar than I am, but they... You know, you, you got to know how to work with each other, and you, you can't just be good at your, at your instrument. You got to have a good head on your shoulder, and you got to have people around you with good head on their shoulders, and to keep you in check. And you know, if you're slipping, uh, you know, catch you, and it, it, you know, it definitely takes a lot of both. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, I was wondering if you could tell me, maybe in in recent memory, have you had any terrible fuck ups on stage? 
No, not not really. Um, thanks, though, because I'm sure tonight I'm going to completely fall apart now because I'm going to be thinking about it. It'll give me something to write. No, not, not too bad. Actually, you know, no, I haven't. Fuck, I wish I had. Yeah. As far as touring, um, do you like to tour more with bands that sound like you or bands that maybe don't and then you kind of pick up their fans along the way yeah definitely you know it's it's nice touring with bands with a little bit of a different genre because you're going to get people coming to the shows that don't normally that wouldn't normally come and you can make new fans but at the same time you know it is nice to put a package together where you think like okay this band might might not sound like us but if they like them they'll, they'll probably like us you know so you got to try and put a package together but you definitely don't want to have three or four bands that all sound the exact same playing yeah. the show. It just gets boring. So, have, have you ever had it go terribly wrong where, like, you played like like something like Ozfest and then just got like shoes thrown at you or glass bottles or something? Well, I mean, surprisingly, we, we we've had a decent response to these shows, but yeah, we get placed a lot of times where it's just it'll be like you know, Seether, Buck Cherry, right. Dirty Heads, and you're just like, right. what? How did that happen? You know. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it still goes over well. I think um, when you do a festival like that and it's all rock bands, then we come on, maybe it's a nice to have a little change, so people seem to dig it. Yeah. So, um, I, I, you know, you guys are from Huntington Beach, right? So, um, do you, did you grow up skateboarding? Uh, yeah, I did. Skating, going, you know, grew up at the beach, and, you know, we still live, we all still live there, so I don't do that stuff as much anymore because if I were to break my arm or something, I'd have a bunch of people who are very mad at me, <laughs> so... I don't really too much anymore, but uh, yeah, we all grew up doing that. And, yeah. That's awesome. So as, as far as like maybe um, what you took from, from skate culture or, or whatever, um, how do you think that that affected you growing up? Well, I grew up definitely, I was very deep in the punk scene growing up and that, you know, the skateboard and the punk scene, they, they went together. And, um, you know, I, I guess you take what you, as you grow and you learn and become a person just from all your experiences. And, you know, um, I, we're not a punk band, but I still think that we have some of that, you know, mindset in our music and just the way we, we, we go about things and everything. But, um, yeah, you know, just live and learn, I guess. Cool. So um, I guess you guys put this album out back in July. Did you were you touring before that or did that start after that album came out? Oh, we're always touring. If um, if we're not recording an album, we're touring. So, yeah, it, it never stops. You never like We're not just going to tour for a while. Like. How how has this tour been? Um, have you gone any any new places for for this tour? No, we haven't really gone anywhere new. Um, it's been good though. You know, we it, we're just doing this was like a smaller tour in the states and just to kind of actually make some money. So because we're going to go to Europe right after this tour, and we don't have a huge following over there. So you know, you got to go places like that and you got to kind of start over. So we're actually at the end of this tour going over there for ten days, jumping in a van doing that the small clubs so most of the money that we're making from this tour is just to pay for the europe run you know? so we're gonna go wow some money and play the small crowds again and start over over there so it's it's not actually like that amazing to be like you know you're not like rolling in, in the big box or anything definitely not in europe that's for sure <laughs> so how is it um what are, what are the differences you know i years ago when i saw you you were you were opening for all these bands and now you're headlining um how much greater is it to headline or, or is it better? Well, obviously, you know, it's nice to, as the headliner because, you know, it's your crowd and, and, you, and you get to kind of dictate the tour as far as who you want to be on it and you get to play a longer set and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, to be honest, it, it, direct support is the best because, you know, it's not, you, you don't have to worry if it's sold out or not because it's not your show. And then, um, right. Uh, you get to be done earlier, so you get to party while the other band's playing. Like, when we're done, everyone's just gone, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning, you know? So it's like, and we don't really drink before we play anymore and stuff, so you're kind of just sitting around all day just hanging out, and then when you're done with work, it's late. So you, you mentioned, you know, not drinking before you play, not skating as much. Uh, what are the other terrible hard lessons that you had to learn to, to keep this whole thing going? Um, yeah, you can't, you can't party every day, all day, and, um, you just got to try and stay healthy, and, um, you know, if, if you, if you party super hard every day, you're going to get sick, and then once you get sick on the road, you never get better, you just keep getting sicker, so, <laughs> you got to, you got to try and stay healthy, healthy and be smart. Yeah.